everyone, it's and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit more chatty and casual rather than official because I don't only want to tell you about the books that I've read in September and my plans for October. I also want to talk about the books that I'm currently reading because my September went not as productive as I expected it to go. So I have a lot of uh, books on my currently reading shelf, which is a common thing for me, to be honest, because I do read a lot of books at the same time, but it's a heinous amount at the moment, so... Let's start from the top. Despite the fact that a lot of the books that I read in September I gave not a favorable amount of stars, I still don't think about this reading experience as a flop. Although I have read a lot of books that I didn't enjoy. The first book that I want to talk about is Meet Cute Diary by Merle, which I gave two stars to. I know. But we're going to talk about it. Anyway, it's a young adult contemporary romance and it's about a transgender guy that is a hopeless romantic. He watches a lot of rom-coms, has a lot of theories and steps to a perfect romance and hopes to meet a partner in a very cinematic way. He also owns a blog that is dedicated to transgender romances. No one actually leaves anything in the suggestion box, he just makes the stories up. But he does it for a good reason. He wants to encourage trans people to date or to be open to love or to feel validated. At the start of the novel, he moves from Florida to other city and lives with his brother as their parents are looking for another house. He continues to uh, write in his blog and he goes to a lot of different places to get inspiration. He meets a guy in this bookshop, writes about him in his blog and this guy figures his identity out because he's a follower of the blog. They talk it out and decide to fake date for a good cause because it would be inspirational for the other kids and also to make sure that the protagonist is not going to be outed as a liar for making up the stories. I picked it up because I was on a fake dating kick and it's not the part that I didn't like. I also made a video about my favorite fake dating uh, queer romances, so if you want to check it out, I'm going to leave the link. The story was okay when it came to the fake dating aspect, although it diffused very quickly and didn't have much tension. That's not what I objected to. The problem with this book, in my opinion, is that the protagonist is not just messy or unlikable. He doesn't have any redeeming qualities, in my opinion, and everything that happens to him is very convenient. I don't hate an unlikable protagonist, I would rather they have flaws, but the problem with this protagonist specifically is that he was mean for no reason. When I get an unlikable protagonist, I need something that makes them appealing, something else. For example, they can be mean, but they are extremely clever, then I will love them. Or they are a serial cheater, but a very loyal friend. Enter Shane McCutcheon. But with this protagonist, I didn't see any redeeming qualities. He was rude to his parents, which is fine, he's a teenager. He was rude to his brother, which is fine, he's a teenager. But he was also extremely mean to random people. And not in a funny, sarcastic way. There was a girl that his brother dated and that he hated to bits for no fucking reason. At the end, she turned out to be a transphobe, but he couldn't know this this whole time. It was not on the page, so another very convenient thing for the character. Anyway, this girl was pretty harmless the whole time, while the protagonist constantly insulted her in his head. I was especially peeved by the casual misogyny and how he critiqued her appearance. I just don't think it's very kind. But also as a trans person that is constantly worried about passing, you should know better and not critique other people's appearances. That's just my five cents. I found the protagonist insufferable and I actually wished the story was about a different character in this book. Moving on, the next thing that I've read was on my TBR. It's The Gentle Art of Fortune Hunting by KJ Charles. It was nothing special but very enjoyable. It's one of those books that are pretty simple but at the same time give you so many cozy feelings. It's a historical romance about a brother and a sister that are both con artists and that come to London to marry rich 
and to pay their debts. The sister sets her eyes on a duke with a bad reputation and the brother decides on a young heiress that is too interested in science and math for her own good, as her relatives say. The sister is luckier than the brother because while the brother charms his target, he also immediately gets clocked by the uncle of the heiress. The uncle suspects that the protagonist is playing a long con and is trying to marry the girl for money. The romantic storyline is between the protagonist and his uh, target's uncle. They get into a situationship. One of them loses to the other in cards and they both decide to settle the debt with sex. It's actually a very interesting premise for me. It's more original than many other historical romances. I also really like the fact that the vibe of the story overall felt like an old school period drama because there were a lot of characters. It was not only focused on these two and it kind of gave me a Jane Austen-esque adaptation maybe. If you like cozy stories about big groups of people uh, that are not focused just on the couple, I think you're going to enjoy it. I wouldn't be able to tell you a lot from that book, but I definitely had a good time reading it, which is the most important part for me in a romance. I also really enjoyed the uncle because he was also a stoic character with a very soft center and I just love those. I love them. Then I picked up another book from my TBR. I know, shocking. The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. This book sounded like it was specifically written for me. It's about two guys uh, that fall in love on the set of The Bachelor and it's a romantic comedy. What else? What else? is better than this. I love reality TV shows, specifically the ones that are about dating, because I'm fascinated by uh, the way they are produced, and I watch quite a few of them. It wasn't a five or a four star read for me, sadly, it was only a three, because I really enjoyed certain parts of it, but I also disliked the others. The story is about Dev, uh, who is a producer on a Bachelor-esque show, it's called Ever After, and he was obsessed with it since a very young age, he really loves romance, specifically cinematic romance, he's very romantic, and he is very good at his job, he's really good at talking to contestants and he's been with the show for a couple of years. This year though presents an interesting challenge in the face of Charles who's the new bachelor, he's a tech genius, really hot but also completely is not a TV personality. He doesn't know how to act in front of the camera, he has severe anxiety and OCD I think and he's just not dedicated to making this whole thing work. He's trying, but it never works out. So the creators of the show assigned Dev to Charles because they believe that Dev is going to make it work. And this is how their relationship starts. They become really good friends, they have their own issues with opening up and trusting other people. And all of this is happening while they're still filming this season. So Charles has to find a girl that he's going to end up with at the end of the show. The relationship was the highlight of the book and I also like the fact that the author took Charles' anxiety seriously. The second thing that I really liked as well is that Charles was demisexual and I really connected to his experience and that he also was a virgin in his late 20s. I think there is not a lot of rap of older virgins in romances and in general in media that is not negative. The thing that makes me sad because I experienced it is how terrible the dating scene is for virgins, specifically for 20-something virgins. I started dating girls at 17 and never dated before that at all because I knew that I don't like men. And at 17 already I was shamed for being a virgin. I was called terrible things, frigid, robot, alien, asked uh, very intrusive, very dumb questions and all of that from people that were seemingly polite and normal uh, when you first talked to them. It was as if they would have preferred me to have a terrible experience in the past 
than to have none. So that was bad. And it got even worse when I entered my 20s. So I was very happy with the portrayal of Charles. And I think we need more of these types of characters because the way virgins and specifically older virgins are stigmatized and um, the way the sex positivity movement pleased them as incels and uglies and losers in the minds of people is just, it's cruel, it's unacceptable, it's just ugly in my opinion. I really loved that part of the book. I think it was important. I think a lot of people in their 20s that don't have much sexual experience are going to relate to it. It was just well done. Dev didn't shame him for having no experience. It was not this big conversation. It was really cool. The thing that I didn't love about the book is the first 50-60% of it. Charles has severe anxiety and he was barfing his way through this competition. I was just sad reading it because he had such a bad time on that show. This man doesn't deserve this and needs some peace. It was really hard to enjoy this part. The romance there was cute and swoony and everything I wanted. So I do recommend to read it. Next up is something silly that I just wanted to read. It's At Her Service by Heidi Love. The script is constantly trying to make me read uh, erotic FF romances and it doesn't know that I'm usually not into erotic romances, I'm more into classical romances, but I gave it a try because the premise was interesting. So, at her service, it's about a girl whose parents go bankrupt and who has to somehow finance her art uni overseas. So she goes on Reddit or a similar platform and found a listing from a rich housewife who is looking to be entertained by a woman, but she's also not the only one that requires the services. She also says that she has a lot of other friends, other bored housewives, that want to get a taste of this girl as well. So she decides that it's not the worst job, considering that she's actually attracted to women and she's going through a dry spell. So she meets with the woman to see if she's hot, and spoiler alert, she is and decides to go with it. This one is what you expect it to be. It's an erotic novel with different scenarios and fantasies that these women have and want to fulfill. She goes to their parties and works as a waitress in sexy costumes. She meets with them individually and does all kinds of things with them. The premise is very good and the writing is very good. I was very invested. The problem with this book is that the sex scenes are not sexy. All the goddamn unnecessary euphemisms made the sex scenes a turn off. I liked the scenes before the sex scenes, the actual fantasies that they were trying to recreate, but the sex was terrible. And I was really sad about it because I was actually enjoying the book and there are other books in the series, so I don't even know if I can recommend it because I loved the premise and I loved the characters and I loved the storytelling. I just hated the sex scenes and it's an erotic novel. The sex scenes have to be great. This book had a lot of promise and it failed me and I'm kind of mad about it. I gave it three stars though. Then I finished listening to Captive, a mother's crusade to save her daughter from the terrifying cult Nexium, a very very long title by Catherine Oxenberg and it's basically about the Nexium cult. It was recently busted it's a sex cult that started as a series of lifestyle and business courses. Catherine Oxenberg is just a rich woman, ex-actress and a heiress to some kind of European royal family. She and her daughter India went to a business course that was organized by Nexium. It was called Differently at the time and they got sucked into the cult, specifically her daughter. I gotta say that the story was interesting and I appreciated how honest Catherine Oxenberg was. It's very hard to judge the quality of the book that is about an actual thing that happened. It's non-fiction, it's about trauma mostly, but I also gotta say that it doesn't paint uh, Catherine Oxenberg in very flattering ways. 
occasionally. I'm not sure she realizes it because she's very much I'm into yoga and courses and lifestyle things type of person. And at the start she doesn't understand why her child got involved with Nexium when she was the one that brought her into the cult and also she was the one that brought a lot of people into the cult and also she was the one that uh, was bringing her child to all this spiritual mumbo jumbo uh, courses before that so she already kind of showed by example that it's okay to be into them and also at a certain moment uh, she complained about all the Nexium courses they had to pay for and how damaging they were. But also at the end decided to create her own snake oil course about female sexuality because she wanted to help women everywhere. And I'm like, people are paying for it, so you're not helping. It would have been much more helpful if you decided to go into charity and give poor women food or clothing or makeup or help them with work or housing. Next time though was a cult for rich people and when reading this book occasionally I got frustrated with Catherine Oxenberg because she is a rich rich person and she is really not down to earth sometimes. So. If you want to read this book, keep it in mind. Did she help a lot of people at the end and saved her daughter? Yes, absolutely, and that's admirable. But also, if you want to read this one, keep in mind that the protagonist is occasionally very annoying. And honestly, I don't want to assume, but kind of gives me anti-vax vibes, so... Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's just stereotypical thinking on my part. The last book that I've read in September was A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. It was absolutely brilliant. I already talked about it in my full recommendations video. It's a dark academia. It's young adult, I believe, although I would actually sell it to adults. The story is about Felicity that comes back to Dalloway School, which is a private school for rich people after the death of her ex-girlfriend, which also happened on the premises. She had a full-blown mental health crisis and her mother still sent her back to continue her education. She meets a whole new group of girls and she becomes friends with them, specifically with a girl named Alice, who's super mysterious and is actually a best-selling order at 17. Alice is very inquisitive and she wants to know about the world, she wants to experience it, she wants to do every single thing she wants to write about in her books because this way her writing is more authentic and she's fascinated by Felicity because of Felicity's experience with death. Her ex-girlfriend died in front of her eyes. So Alice follows her around and she wants to prove to Felicity that the way her girlfriend died was not tied to magic because Felicity is very superstitious and believes that something magical took place. Unsurprisingly, because the school was set up by one of the Salem witches, so there are a lot of occult elements in it. I had a lot of expectations for this book and the first part of it was not impressing me much. I was very bored but it got so much better and it's so worth it because the last 50% are to die for and specifically the last 80 pages gave me so much good adrenaline and and if you love Hannibal I know I comparing a lot of books to Hannibal this one is very Hannibal-esque the dynamic between Alice and Felicity is very Hannibal-esque because of how Will and Hannibal constantly pushed each other and always talked about death and morality and art. Felicity and Alice are the same. It's Suffolk, it's dark, it's good. I loved it. It's one of my favorite Dark Academia books now and I'm going to read even more in October. But first, we're going to talk about the books that I'm currently reading and then we're going to move to my October TBR, which is going to be very broad. I'm kind of into mood reading right now. Back to my current reading. I am reading a lot of books at the moment, some of which we talked about. For example, The Home of Midnight, I'm still reading that. Uh, the Little Fires Everywhere, I'm still reading that. Was not in the mood for those two books, but 
I'm still going to read them at some point. Another book that I'm reading right now is Heartless by Gail Carriger. I've had it on my TBR for uh, September and I'm almost at the end. I think I have about 100 pages left. This one is both disappointing and exciting. I have very mixed feelings on it, as you can tell. This is the fourth in the Parcel Protectorate series. I hope that it's gonna be as exciting as the previous one, but it's not. Gail Carriger gave me a lot of character development in it, and specifically of background characters that I was very interested in, but the plot of role was not as exciting. I think because Alexei is heavily pregnant in this book and she cannot go gallivanting about. Well, she's trying, but she's very heavy and her back hurts, which is understandable. The other point that I want to make is I'm very happy happy that Gail Carriger continues to add queer characters into this box. I think at this point we have one, two, three, four, four prominent queer characters. I'm sure it's not intentional though, but all of them have very tragic life stories, which is sad for me because I'm happy that they exist in this world, but for some reason they are on the end stick of a lot of angst. All the straight characters get happy endings and happy marriages. Alexi is married and pregnant. Her friend Ivy is married and pregnant. Her sister is kind of getting a love story too in this book. And I'm sitting here thinking about all the queer characters in this book and I'm coming up only with tragic love stories. At least one queer couple has to get a happy ending. I'm sure it's not intentional. I'm sure it's for the drama, but you can separate a straight couple instead, I'm not going to mind. I'm actually going to be happier with that decision. I'm hoping that there is going to be a happy couple, one queer happy couple at the end of this because it's hinted at and they're doing a lot of matchmaking. And I loved when Alexis was asking her husband why these two cannot get together and why her matchmaking is bad actually. And Connell was all like, see wife, the problem is they're both bottoms, but he was using euphemisms. It gave me a good laugh. But overall, so far, the stories of the square characters are quite bleak. I'm also actively reading One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. I'm enjoying it so far. I forgot how much I love uh, the writing style that Casey McQuiston has. It immediately pulls me into the story. I was doubting if I'm going to love this book or not because of the troops specifically because of the time loop trope, but so far I'm really enjoying it. The other book that I picked up and that I'm about 60% into is The Time Sleep Girl by Elizabeth Andre. I'm not going to talk about all the books I'm currently reading, only the ones that I'm actively reading because my currently reading shelf is embarrassing. Anyway, The Time Sleep Girl is about a woman whose girlfriend died and who travels with her brother to England because uh, she and her girlfriend wanted to travel to England and she slips in time. She goes to this excursion to one of the old houses and she travels back in time and meets this woman named Agnes that lives in that house. So far nothing happened romantically. There is some tension. The protagonist wants to get back to her time. She has a phone with her that she's constantly checking. The battery is getting lower and lower and there is this mysterious man that is investigating the slips in time. So she hopes that he's going to help her get back to her time. I'm not big on time travel romances, you know that. I have trouble with time travel, but I picked it up because the cover was very pretty and script recommended it to me. I love the historical aspect of it. I was worried that it's gonna be really rough considering that the protagonist is black. It's less worrying because it's set in UK and not in the US, but she does experience quite a few microaggressions and there are a couple of villains in this book that are racist. Overall, so far, I would give this book three stars. Maybe the romance is going to sway me and I'll give it four. We'll see. Anyway, those are all the books that I'm actively reading right now and I'm going to finish soon. I'm always saying soon as if it's going to be tomorrow, but I can't finish all the books by tomorrow. And in October, I'm planning to read 
books that I want to read. I'm not going to assign myself any challenges. I just want to rest, relax, and mood read because mood reading is my favorite. And I'm currently in the mood for these three categories of books. Historical romances, specifically queer historical romances, still in the mood for them. Paranormal romances or dark romances. I found quite a few FF titles that I'm really interested in. For example, a dystopian FF romance and I'm really excited for it. I also found quite a few FF vampire romances and quite a few racer mafia romances. Really happy that they exist. I also really want to read more Dark Academia and I've put aside a few books from my most anticipated video. I will link it. You can see all the titles there. If you want to recommend me a book that is a part of any of this category, do it in the comments down below. I actually would like to get a random recommendation and to read it. Anyway, I'm not trying to make this into a ridiculously long video that would be unwatchable. So in the comments section, just tell me what you're planning to read in October, what you've read in September. Let's share. Maybe we read similar books. Also, I wanted to announce that uh, me and Ingrid are going to start doing uh, what watch-alongs again. We've done watch-alongs for Hannibal and we did live streams on my channel and discussed two episodes at a time. And we're going to do this again for Killing Eve. So if you're into Killing Eve, if you want to talk with friends and Killing Eve lovers about the show, you can join us every Saturday. I will link the first stream that is going to happen on October 9th in the box down below. We would be really glad to see you there in the chat and talk about the show. I recently watched the first two episodes for the live stream and um, I forgot how good the show is. Anyway, if you love the show, join us. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have nothing to say, leave the emoji of uh, full leaves in the comments down below. And I'll see you next with another video. But until then, bye.